Hello and welcome to another video. So I'll do the second video on this um, series of finding the derivative of an inverse trig function from first principles. Like you see here, we're not going to be doing dy dx, we're going to be taking limits just as you would find the derivative of any function from first principles or using the definition. So if you look at what we have, it's arctan x and we want to show that the derivative of arctan x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. So let's just get into it. Already I've written this in form of the definition. So remember that generally if we have f of x and you want to find the derivative, it will always be the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So all we have to do is just do manipulations, just try and find something nice to do so that we can make use of this function. So let's go here. Just like I did when I did for arc sine, I'm going to do this a similar thing for arc tan. I'm going to make this the tangent of something so that the arc tan of tangent is going to give me back whatever that thing is. So um, the best substitution to do now is to say that x plus h is equal to tan a. Okay, so let's say, let x plus h be equal to tan a, okay, and let the other one, let x be equal to tan b. And you know what this means? This simply means that h will be equal to tan a minus x, tan a minus x, but we said x is tan b, so we can write this as tan b. Nice substitution. And notice from here, as h goes to 0, tan a goes to tan b, okay? Because the closer tan a gets to tan b, the closer this gets to 0. So we have to recognize that substitution also, so that at a, as h goes to 0, this goes to tan b. So we're going to replace this also with this expression and say that as h goes to 0, okay, tan a, goes to tan b. That's one substitution. And because this is a restricted function, this arctan is a restricted function because we're taking derivatives and we're dealing with functions that exist. So there's going to be a restriction also so that as ten, if tan a goes to tan b, then a goes to b. Okay? Because it's a one-to-one -one function. So for all one-to-one -one functions, well, actually, that's the definition. Okay, so for a one-to-one one function, you have f of x will become f of y when x is equal to y. This is the only condition for this to be true for all one-to-one -one functions. So, and because this is a one-to-one -one function, we are going to do that. So we're going to also say, or we can say, as h goes to zero, we have a also goes to b. So these are all the things we need in order to continue our uh, derivation. So now all we have to do is plug in everything back to this function and we're gonna say that f prime of x will be equal to, um, let's see, this is gonna be the limit as, instead of saying as h goes to zero, I'm gonna say as a goes to b, the limit as a goes to b, okay, of, arctan of x plus h, which is going to be um, arctan of, what is x plus h? We said x plus h is going to be tan a. So it's going to be tan a, okay, uh, minus tan b, okay, which is, sorry, arctan of tan b. Okay, let's write that, of tan b, and under it, we're going to have h. What did we say h was? It's tan a minus tan b. So this is tan a minus tan b. Okay, nice. So we've replaced everything and that's what we've got. So let's simplify. The arctan of tan a was, is going to give us just a. Okay, so this tells us that the limit as a goes to b of the top part is just going to be a. This part is going to be just b divided by tan a minus tan b. Okay, 
Now, do we have any identity to be able to get rid of this? Yes, in fact, there are two different identities. The first one is a straightforward tan identity. The second one is uh, a manipulation of tan into sine and cosine. But I want to be consistent, so let me stick to the sine and cosine. So I'm going to rewrite this expression actually as sine A over cosine A, and this is going to be sine B over cosine B. And let's see what we can get out of this. So this is going to be the same thing as the limit as A goes to B of A minus B over sine A over cosine A minus sine B over cosine B. Okay, so this is the same thing as the limit as A goes to B of A minus B over... Now look at this. If we make this into a single fraction, this multiply this, this multiply this, you're going to have sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. So it's going to become sine A cos B minus cos A sine B divided by the product of these two, which is going to be cosine A, cosine B. And if your uh, fractions, your algebra is good, you know that this is going to go up here and this is going to stay here. But we know that what's here is the identity for sine A minus B. This actually is sine A minus B. Let's rewrite it. So this is going to be the limit as A goes to B of A minus B over, this is going to be sine a minus B divided by cosine A cosine B. Now this flips up and what we're left with will be the limit as A goes to B of, watch this, this is going to be now A minus B over sine A minus B. So let's make this in the parenthesis multiplied by cosine A cosine b. Now let's take the limit. Watch the limit. This says a goes to b, so this goes to 0 and this goes to 0. And remember that identity that the limit as x goes to 0 of x over sine x equals 1. Now if you flip this, it's still the same thing. So whether this is on top or under is the same thing. So this limit is going to go to 1. Okay, so this is the same thing as 1 multiplied by, now cosine A cosine B, as A goes to B, cosine A will become cosine B, so it becomes cosine B times cosine B, that's cosine squared B, that's cosine squared B. And that's our answer. But we just need to write cosine squared B in terms of X. Um, how can we change it? Oh, we know that X is tan B. So we can quickly make a triangle and watch this. If we make a triangle, let's make it here. So if we make a triangle for B, this is angle B, and we know that the tangent of B is X. Tangent of B is opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be X over 1. So tan B is X. So what is the hypotenuse? It's going to be the sum of these two, that's X squared plus 1 put a square root. So what will cosine B is? So our answer is actually cosine squared B, which is equal to, what is cosine? Is adjacent over um, hypotenuse. So this, but we're squaring it. So cosine squared B is going to be 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1 squared, which is equal to 1 over the square of x squared plus 1, which is the answer we were supposed to get. Now, this is how to show from first principle or the definition of the derivative that the derivative of octan x is equal to 1 over x squared plus 1. In calculus 2, this is something you will have to live on because many problems will require this um, antiderivative. Okay. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.